lovely neighborhood If you live there, they say you're living good Pretty lawns with fancy landscapes She stares ahead with a blank gaze In her lovely neighborhood Where the living is good And good afternoon and welcome to a rainy Friday in Los Angeles. I'm your host, Mark Gertz. Uh, you have tuned in to reverse your thinking. Um, I'm a mortgage broker in Los Angeles. The name of my company is also Reverse Your Thinking Mortgage. But on this show, we deal with lots of different topics and lots of different subjects. And we try to turn them on their head and help you see them from a different point of view. Uh, that lead in music you heard was the jazz and blues singer, Angie Wells. She, uh, she performed last night at the Merck up into Mel up into Mecula to a sold out crowd. And she's gonna be performing again at uh, Vibrato in Los Angeles, uh, Vibrato Jazz Grill uh, on uh, March 2nd. And I highly recommend that you don't meet it, uh, you don't miss it. Um, her, uh, her latest album, Truth Be Told is dropping today. So please go online and, um, and find it for yourself. Some really great, great songs on there, um, including that one you were listening to, which is one of the first jazz blues songs to come along in decades, talking about homelessness of all things. Um, I wanted to start today's show uh, talking to you about marijuana. Yeah, that's right. We're going to talk about weed, okay? We're going to talk about, about smoke. Um, I came across an article uh, about uh, a new uh, test that they did that, um, that was to, to find out what effect weed had on testosterone in men. And, uh, and they did this big, long test, and they did this whole long article. And what they found out was what they already knew, which is that it doesn't, it doesn't affect it much positively or negatively. Um, they say that there's a, a, a little bit of an of a increase in testosterone if you smoke once in a while, but if you do it all the time, eh, it doesn't have any impact on your testosterone levels at all. Now, it may have an impact on your state of mind and it may, you know, um, it may uh, affect your sex life in the sense that you're thinking about it more. But when it comes to the chemical balances in your body, there is no conclusive test that says that marijuana uh, and testosterone uh, have anything in common. So, I wanted to talk with you about that because uh, if you thought that that smoking was going to, you know, make you more virile and 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 uh, make you make you more attractive to the opposite sex, guess what? Uh, all the uh, all the tests that they've done over the last few years say that that just ain't true. Just ain't true. What do you think about this weather, huh? How about that? Yeah, a blizzard, a blizzard in Southern California. Did you ever think in your wildest dreams that, that you would be living through a blizzard in Southern California? Well, I think you better get used to it because there's a lot of changes coming over the next 20, 30 years. And um, this may just be the tip of the iceberg, no puns intended. Um, there, was a, there was an article in the Orange County Business Journal uh, a few weeks back about job growth in Orange County. Now, you might be wondering why I'm segueing into job growth in Orange County. Well, you'll, you'll see, just, just stay right here, all right? And, uh, and we will talk about it. Speaking of staying right here, let me just remind our audience that uh, this is actually a call-in show and you actually do have an opportunity to voice your opinion. Um, if you're sitting in traffic and not moving, please pick up your phone and dial us at 951-922-3532. If you're moving, don't do that. But if you're not moving, give us a call at 951-922-3532. We would love to know what's on your mind today. And of course, if you're sitting at home, you can do that too. Anyway, there was this article about job growth in Orange County, and they spoke to um, Jim Doty, who's the President Emeritus uh, Economics Professor at Chapman University. 
And um, they're predicting, they're predicting in Orange County is that uh, a, a sort of like a mild recession. They don't, uh, they don't see job growth uh, going up a whole bunch. Uh, they they kind of see, uh, see OC either losing a few jobs or standing pat, but they're not expecting a whole bunch of, of, of positive change taking, taking place in the old OC. Um, and I'm not quite sure what that, what that means for the rest of us in the, in the rest of the state or the rest of the country, but that's, uh, you know, c considering what a juggernaut uh, Orange County has been over the last few years in terms of job growth and, and jobs and, and, and all the rest of that, uh, that's, that's kind of eye-opening. In addition to that, they, they don't think that a lot of the job growth that is going to happen is going to be uh, high level. It's all going to be more uh, um, minimum wage and, and, and lower paid jobs. We'll be back in a few minutes to uh, discuss these things further. You're listening to Reverse Your Thinking with Mark Gertz on KMET. So welcome back. I'm Mark Gertz. Uh, I'm a mortgage broker in Los Angeles, and you're listening to Reverse Your Thinking. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the fact that the prospects for job growth in Orange County are, are expected to be nil over the next couple of years. And, and wh why that becomes important is that when you think of job growth in Orange County, you have to think about what's going to happen with the housing market in 2023. Um, and, um, and, that's, and that's really important, not only in terms of the real estate industry, the mortgage industry, um, the home improvement industry, but also with regard to young families that are trying to create wealth, because real estate is one of the things that people use traditionally, buying that first home. Is a, is a great way to create wealth. And we're gonna talk more about that. But what's in store for the housing market in 2023 is, is something very important for many of us in SoCal. Um, what, what we're talking about here, what seems to be expected is that new home sales, housing starts and existing home sales, they were all down in 2022 compared to 2021. And um, obviously, this can be attributed to home prices going up and uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, home prices going up and, and uh, mortgage rates also going up and making it impossible for a lot of people to qualify for lending for these things. Um, but even with that, all right, what's also interesting right now is that demand for housing has fallen sharply uh, due to pricing and mortgage interest rates, as we just said. Why is that? Why would the demand fall? Well, the reason is, is that people are sitting on the sidelines. People that either can't qualify or people that are waiting for home prices to come down or interest rates to come down or, or both, okay? Now, if you're sitting on the sidelines and you're waiting for these things to happen, which one do you think is more important? home prices coming down, not the interest rates. And why is that? That's because, that's because interest rates rise and fall all the time. But whatever you pay for a home, that's what you pay. That's the principal portion of anything that you finance. The interest portion can be refied, but the principal portion is always going to be there. By the same token, there are areas where home prices are already falling, where there is a significant difference. In addition to that, um, foreclosures are on the rise, which means there are, are potential opportunities for savvy uh, investors to pick up properties, either as a primary residence or for investment property or to, to fix and flip. Um, a lot of these opportunities are here now that haven't been in this way in a very, very long time, by which I mean going back to the, 19, the late 1990s and 2008, 2009. Um, not, that, not that I'm saying that you should take advantage of someone else's misfortune, but 
you know, sometimes that's where fortunes are made. Um, will mortgage interest rates rise or fall? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not even going to read anything. I'm going to give you my opinion. I think they're going to continue to go up a little bit. Yes, I do. Not as sharply as they did in 22, but I think interest rates are going to continue to rise a little bit in 2023 before they start falling again. You know, it's really important to try to remember that since World War II, average interest, home mortgage interest rates have really been more like in the sixes, sevens, what we've seen over the last four, five, six years is really a bit of an anomaly. You know, interest rates in the twos and the threes. It's no more of an anomaly. It's no more of an exception to the rule than when we saw interest rates in uh, 19, uh, 1979, 1980, in like the 18% range. So, so that that five, that six, seven percent interest rate is is really more the the normal and. And I frankly don't think that we're going to see rates dramatically drop below that um, over the next few years. So, uh, so when is the right time to buy real estate? It's always the right time to buy real estate. Will your, will your investment go up? Eventually. Sometimes it'll go down a little bit, but eventually it will go up. And even with the recession of 2008, 2009, real estate, residential real estate, primary residence still continues to be an excellent investment and an excellent opportunity and way for people to accumulate wealth. And accumulating wealth, especially wealth that you can leave through the generations is an extremely important consideration when you're figuring out when and where and how to invest money. It's not just about you and what you can do in your lifetime. It's about the type of legacy you can leave. There, there's a great book called Hawaii by James Michener. It's historical fiction. It's about this um, Asian family that immigrates to Hawaii and, and the way they put together wealth and power that gets left to different generations. It's a, in some ways, it's a very good primer for learning how to do it for yourself. And it's an enjoyable read because as I said, it's historical, but it's also fiction. Hawaii by James A. Michener. Uh, it's been great talking with you this afternoon and we're gonna continue this. Uh, we've got a wonderful guest coming on. Stay tuned for that. We'll be right back after this message. This is Mark Gertz and this is Reversing Your Thinking. And we're back and you're listening to Mark Gertz and this is reversing your thinking where we take every assumption that you ever thought and try to turn it on its head and get you to look at it from another point of view. Um, we've got a wonderful and different and different type of guest uh, this afternoon and I am very pleased to introduce you to Claudia Hogue. Claudia is a headshot and portrait specialist and she trained um, and was influenced by Peter Hurley, who uh, is one of the greatest headshot photographers of all time. Um, besides attention to detail and flawless techniques, um, her approach is to give great direction to the subject, to the person that's getting their headshot made and bring to the image a strong expression and connection with the viewer. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but that's why she's here, because she's going to explain that. Um, She's also a, a personal branding photographer, and she was trained by world-class uh, photographer Wendy Yalom uh, and by Jamie Swanson, uh, leader of the personal branding photography movement. I didn't even know there was a personal photography branding movement, and we're going to talk with her about that too. Um, anyway, the reason I wanted to have her on is because um, a lot of times we think of headshots as something that, you know, only actors and actresses and stars and really wealthy people do, right? And, and Claudia said, I'm, I'm totally wrong about that. And I wanted to find out more about that. And I hope you do too. Um, 
If you want to talk to Claudia, you can do that at 951-922-3532. But let's get to it. Claudia, why headshots? Why, um, why should people, why should common people, normal people, everyday people think about headshots? Um, you know, I started doing headshots for actors uh, because my son is an actor, um, but I found that um, there is, a, and, and that was years ago, and it's more and more every year where people, have, especially after lockdown, where people have to um, connect with other people online. Uh, and uh, the human touch of seeing someone's face makes it a huge difference. Um, when I started with actors, specifically with my son that needed headshots and I was paying for other headshot photographers and I had the headshot photographer that was technically excellent, but I I didn't see my son coming alive in the pictures. And I asked him and he says, well, he just, he didn't bring it to the session. It's like, what? <laughs> I didn't think it was a pretty expensive session. And, and I, I asked for a reshoot. It's like, no, there's no reshoot. He just, he didn't bring it. I don't, I didn't think that was right. I think as I think today, and I and I had an and I, I learned more and more about it over the years, but that it, it is a photograph, a headshot, whatever photograph you create, or image you create is uh, mm -hmm. teamwork. Mm -hmm. And even even for a seasoned actor, you can't just. It's really hard to do that in a void. It's really hard to do a, a nice, a connected selfie. Mm -hmm. that you take a selfie and the people look at it is like you're looking at them mm -hmm. um it it always feels a little fake when you're talking taking a selfie because there's nobody to interact with right right so right. it's it's hard to do and and so i started doing let's say okay we this is doesn't work i think actors can have a better service than that let's say oh he just sure. didn't bring it to the session you need to work with the person that is in front of the camera. The person behind the camera and the person in front of the camera work together. So I, I set out to learn all I could about that about headshots. That's when I found Peter Hurley because he was a big, he is a big photographer in New York that had this thing that says, I my goal is to put a a spring on a step of the person. Is that how the expression goes? And the person that comes to my studio. Spring it, in the step. To get, right. them, to get them to walk out the studio better than they walked in. Uh -huh. and, and, and I say, wow, that's, that's really what it is mm -hmm. to me. It's like, that's what's missing. It's um, images are such an important thing for us individually and in society and in culture and history. Okay. <laughs> Putting a but, bunch but, of stuff together. Okay, let, let me let, let me ask you this. I, I I get that. And I and I and I understand and I understand what you're saying about um, being able to capture the essence of somebody in um, in 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 film in in in, uh, in in a headshot. But and 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 I think everybody in our listening audience understands why actors have to have headshots. But um, why would why would let's say for example why would you recommend that an Uber driver or a secretary or um, a salesperson um, have a headshot nowadays? You 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 said something about before and after COVID. Okay, um, what what. Um, what what is the value uh, as you see it for the average working person to to do a headshot session so it's it's that first impression it's that it's the connection with the person um when you get a when you when you have a picture of a person you you don't really get their essence what you get is you get some form of communication you uh -huh. get a moment and and you and you get a communication. You get some a lot of information packed into that image. 
that the person that is seeing, it will impact, of course, based on their own biases, but, but it's a communication. It's an instant communication of a, a lot of information at once okay. that is interpreted differently according to who is seeing it. But um, you immediately, you look at a picture and you can say, okay, this doesn't do anything to me. They're, they're, they're out for lunch. They're not even, they're not looking at me. It's just a picture. It doesn't mean anything. Or they can look at it and it's like, wow, this looks like a cool person that I would like to work with. Okay. Or yeah. you look at the, or you can look at it and say, oh my gosh, I don't think I could stand working with this person. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but when the thing is when you have an intention and you of what you want to say with your image and you put on it and you look at it okay we got it that's what i wanted to say with it this is right. this right. is the moment that that i wanted to capture um you know this is what i wanted to say with it and then the person that will connect with you is the person that matches you that say wow yeah this is a person that i want to work with Okay, well, let me let me ask you this. Um, um, before COVID, um, people didn't have that many opportunities to show off a headshot if they weren't actors or or something. You know, I mean, the average person on the street, even a CPA or a lawyer, and so on and so forth. But after COVID, a lot of business now gets done on Zoom. You know, and sometimes people don't want to be seen for one reason or another, or they go out of the meeting temporarily and they come back. Um, but, but, but the picture that they leave of themselves, it's about the size of your thumbnail. It's really tiny. Okay. Um, do you think it's still important that they get a professional portrait shot to, to put there uh, on the zoom? Of course. And how Why? could I say not? Right. Why? <laughs> but um, because you are, if you if you if you just have your name without image, you on one for one side you're communicating that you don't want you 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 don't want to show your face. Second, you are missing an opportunity to connect with that person that is looking at you. It's a missed opportunity. Um, of course, there there was before COVID. There were people were online, but not as much as they right. are now. Um, and, uh, even if you get to meet a person, someone in person, usually, uh, if you're doing business, you will have an opportunity to, to see that person. Yeah. If, if they, if you can give up an opportunity to, to get that connection and it's a connection that you will show the image that says what you want it to say. Yeah. It's an opportunity that you have that you should so grab so, so you think you think even in a Zoom call that that having a having a thumbnail, a custom designed thumbnail picture of yourself is going to make a difference in in the way you're perceived and and the way people think about you. Well, definitely, definitely, it makes uh, it does definitely. Um, okay. The person already has an idea with you, and we can't help it but create an image of a person when we see their face. To create in our mind an image of that um, of that person, uh, okay. and when you meet in person, you already have that mm -hmm. in your mind. Okay. Um, well, let me ask you this. Um, uh, let's let's talk about let's talk about jobs. Let's talk about um, uh, employment. You know, uh, after COVID, there's, there's a great deal of movement. People are are are. Create, looking at new career opportunities, they're um, uh, switching jobs. So, so people are updating resumes. Do you, uh, is it is it important in your opinion to have your picture on a, on a resume? And and if so, um, would it be important to do a professional headshot for that? Um, you know, back years ago, putting a picture in a resume was bad taste it was kind of gauche yeah yeah but today we don't hand people a paper with your uh, resume most of the time you don't hand them a paper usually they have access to it online okay and then online there are several formats for that 
resume and you don't want to put an image because we come from that years ago it looked bad to, didn't mm -hmm. look good to have your picture there you don't want to put a picture there like you were in a paper right. but you have that your image somewhere because again that's the connection that's the human connection mm -hmm. that make a huge difference between you and another candidate that is anonymous basically because if you don't see their face you don't you you're missing the connection opportunity okay but let me ask you this you you you've said you've said the human connection a few times well why why couldn't i just why couldn't i just take a, a picture of myself with my phone and um uh and and just put that up wouldn't wouldn't that you still can. be a human connection you can it's better than no picture but um, again, that's an opportunity you have to express what you want to, the image to say exactly what you want to say, right. that to make you look your best, to make you look polished, professional, not like, um, my, my aunts took my picture. It, it, you are committed. You are professional. Okay. And, uh, also you have better control to say, okay, I like this picture uh or i don't or i'm i'm you have a professional first of all to work with you to get that expression that you want uh -huh. and second the professional that have eyes that can tell look 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 at the difference between a and b your picture here your picture here and see how you're more connected when you put your chin a little down see how it, this one looks more polished here see how this side is looking better on this side than that Okay. Um, get um, your hair in a way that you look clean and 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 polished. All this kind of stuff. Okay, it doesn't so, really matter if you achieve that by hiring a professional to help you out, uh -huh. or if you're able to do it yourself. Um, but again, um, that's an opportunity to okay. um, to connect with someone in a fraction of a second um, that you can't take back. Okay, once so, they. So so, so, so let me ask you this. So, um, so either, either on my website or, uh, or on a resume, um, uh, if I want, if I want a picture to, um, um, transmit trustworthiness, trustworthiness is, are there things that you can do as a photographer, um, to, to, get that sort of unconscious message across? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, you want to see your eyes, you don't want the shades in your eyes. You okay. don't want a reflection on your glasses that doesn't let me see your eyes. Okay, there uh, are glasses are <laughs> you, don't want to, you don't want to cross your arms. When you cross your arms, you feel more comfortable and it immediately shows in your expression more confidence, but the, the arms, the crossing, um, your chest is actually a communication to that person seeing not there. They might not be conscious of it, but you're cross, you're closing yourself to them. You're closing um, yourself off. Exactly. So there are, so there are a lot of things like that. You, you want to, you want to watch your face. You want to watch your posture. You want to look natural, confident, approachable in, in the, in every little detail on that little picture right right builds that story it's we're building a story okay so um so what i think i'm hearing you say is that um <laughs> sometimes a picture is more than just a picture in other words yeah in other words people can take pictures of themselves um but it's and 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 it's a fine picture um but it's not necessarily going to convey a story and it's not necessarily going to have that unconscious message underneath it that um, that this person is a, a hard worker, that this person is loyal, that this person, um, you know, is trustworthy. All right. Yes. Um, and and you feel that and you feel that you as a professional photographer can bring some of those things out. Definitely. And it's so it's so fun to see how subtle changes affected can, can you give us an example of somebody that you um that you did something like with that so many 
And and the thing about working, taking pictures of people is the first, the first person affected by that picture is the, the subject, is the person that, uh-huh. um, and it's amazing, especially uh, people that are not too sure and they don't think they're going to look in front of the camera. And then when they look, they look friendly, they look alive, they look connected with the viewer, they look, um, you know, sometimes they say it doesn't, wow, they see, they see themselves that way. And once uh-huh. they see themselves that way, it gives them a completely different attitude. Really? Yes. In other words, in other words you've done, you've done uh, photography with people and after they've seen the, the photos that you do, they begin to see themselves differently. For sure. Really? And that always happens, but it happens in different uh, levels. Sometimes it's it's like, oh my gosh, they are like their jaws dropped. And sometimes it's subtle, but really? it, it certainly makes a difference. Well, I would love to hear, I would love to hear a couple of stories about that. Um, we have to take a break here for a couple of minutes to uh, uh, take care of our sponsors and pay for the show. So uh, we'll be right back. Uh, Stay with us. We're talking to uh, Claudia Hogue, professional photographer. You're listening to Reverse Your Thinking. And welcome back. I'm Mark Gertz. Uh, You're listening to Reverse Your Thinking on KMET. And we're speaking to professional photographers photographer Claudia Hogue. Before our break, Claudia was uh, s- saying that um, she's had experiences in the course of her work where people felt differently about themselves after she photographed them. Claudia, can, can you give us an example of that? Can you uh, tell us a story about one of your clients that that, that happened to? Sure. A, a few times I had people see the on the screen because we shot we shoot a little bit i give them directions they come to the screen and they like wow is that really me um but um there was of course the intention is to show the person how they really look like sure. not like someone else um uh, but as if they were in 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 their on their best moment when they're talking to a friend when they're confident uh without worries um there was one lady that i can remember that um she she came to my studio about two or three times uh, the first time she came to my studio she was referred to by to my to me by someone else and uh and she wasn't sure about taking pictures uh-huh. and she asked can i bring my friend they said yes sure you can bring your friend she brought a friend and her mom because she wasn't sure about herself Mm -hmm. and and we had so much fun in the studio and to bring her uh her expressions out we talked and and I um and I was bringing ideas and she would play and we'll be playful and she was she started to open up a little bit and then she got great images Mm -hmm. and she was so amazed she says wow if I knew it was going to be that easy I didn't even have to bring my my friend and my mom I brought them because I wasn't sure um, Mm -hmm. if I could do this and then uh, uh, about months later she came back she's like one new pictures I'm going to be on a, on a um, her story. They had the the company that did um, her story. She was a CEO for a health company, and she yeah, was yeah, on yeah. A, a billboard. They had a the out, oh. out front out front had a billboard with uh, women that made difference. Um, and one of the billboards is going to be her picture. And she wanted the picture to be in this billboard. Uh-huh. And she was like, oh my gosh, I can't um, believe 
how much different I am. Um, I am so, I can come here. I don't have to bring any friend or bring any mom. And I'm so looking forward to those, uh, this photo shoot because uh -huh. I know it's going to be great. And I know I'm going to look great. And I'm going to use this for the out front um, billboard okay. for the, her story. Right. Uh, yeah. And she did and she put it and they put that out and she looked awesome. And uh, it was it was an awesome story. Is yeah. it is it what was it a situation with her that she felt differently about herself after she did the, 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 the shoot with you? She was more sure. She was more after the shoot. Okay. She was more uh, sure of herself. Okay. Um, right. You know the the thing about images. Yeah. I am uh, I am working this year with the Bold Beauty Project, which is a, a project that uh, has been on the East Coast. It's a nonprofit that has been out there for years. And that's the first time they're doing it here on the West Coast. Yeah, it's going to be this year, and uh, and we're going to have an exposition in September downtown in a gallery downtown. But uh, we are taking, we're getting twenty photographers and twenty women with disabilities, with physical disabilities. Okay, and we're doing uh, portraits of them, and okay. uh, so this. This to me, I want. I'm a, I'm a volunteer with this project. I'm. Uh, I was assigned as a model coordinator, and this is uh, an opportunity to uh, to help with change, to have women with physical disabilities to um, to be more to be more uh, visible to be right. to have be more as a model of maybe young women okay children that don't have that model out there that uh -huh. all the things they're capable of being and in, in, in all the diversity of possibilities that are out there for them so it's a so it's a project it's a project to um to make uh, disabled women more visible to the public exactly. so that um, uh, to, to try to help end discrimination against them and to get exactly. people to start thinking of them to, uh, as, as whole, as whole people. Exactly. Right. And, um, and then I, I even, I mean, we've been working on this project uh, for Los Angeles since um, last year, since about, uh -huh. I mean, maybe summer last year, so before summer. So it's been more, um, it, it's going to be more than a year um, since we started until okay. the actually. All right. And I learned a lot. <laughs> I have, the, I have, um, I'm missing an eye. And with this, I learned from those women that, um, that have, we've been uh, talking to um, that um, I lost this eye 20, 30 years ago, 25 years ago. Okay. And I used prosthetic eye and I used uh, sometimes uh, an eye patch and uh, I would never walk around without it. And, and now I do because I learned from them, you know, this is, this is what I am and uh, it doesn't uh -huh. matter. That's not something that matters. Right. Um, um, <laughs> So it really changed, it changed me. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, but it, I think uh, for uh, women, like a young woman, a girl to not see anyone different and if she is different yeah. and, and yeah. how to deal with that difference if, if, if she's not part of the club, club because she's different. Um, <laughs> that make the difference for me, and I think that makes a difference um, to many girls out there first, and to everybody else that is looking at that girl second. Gotcha. And and you're doing the photography on this project. I'm also doing photography, but um, there are, I'm a, the I'm volunteer as a model coordinator. I have to 
uh, organize 20 models mm. with we're looking at diversity we want diversity on everywhere all uh -huh. of the models that you want right and there's someone else that is coordinating the photographers so that's what we're doing well that's great um so if if somebody in our audience wants to get in touch with you what would be the best way for them to do that Oh, please email me at Claudia at hoagstudio.com. Um, okay, and Hoag is spelled? H-O-A-G, H as in hospital, O as in orange, A as in apple, G as in George, studio.com, hoagstudio.com. So Claudia at hoagstudio.com. Um, yes. You're listening to Reverse Your Thinking. We're talking with photographer Claudia Hogue. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Uh, this is Mark Gertz. You're listening to Reverse Your Thinking, where we take everything that you know and knew and know, and we try to turn it on its head. We were talking to Claudia Hogue, uh, our guest this week, about why headshots, why everybody should consider getting a headshot. And uh, I highly recommend that uh, if you do need a headshot or you do want to investigate possibly getting one, that you call Claudia. She's brilliant at what she does. Um, before she came on, we were talking about financial things with regard to um, to buying homes, creating wealth, and so on and so forth. Um, there was an article um, just this past Sunday in the LA Times um, entitled, Prepare Your Wallet for Climate Change and Natural Disasters. Prepare Your Wallet for Climate Change and Natural Disasters. And in, in some ways, um, this is a this article is so proactive that i don't even think most of us can comprehend the idea of trying to make plans based upon the fact that climate change is real and that it's coming but i think today is a perfect day to do that considering the fact that we've got a blizzard com coming down on los angeles and who would have ever thought there'd be a blizzard in Los Angeles? Um, the things that it says in this article, it, it, here are some of the things that it, that it shares with you that, that you can do. Because if we're talking about reversing our thinking, you know, one of the things that we've never really, when I say we, I mean you, I mean me, I mean people in general, the world, 5 billion people, that we've never really taken into consideration when it comes to our money, and our economics and building wealth is the fact that in our lifetimes, in our lifetimes, we're going to see significant changes in the weather. So that a lot of assumptions that we have made about what it might be like to retire in Florida or in New Mexico or in Panama are going to be different, are going to change. So, so here are the suggestions in this article about what we can do about that. Number one, compare home insurance options. Get quotes from insurers and consider getting help from an independent agent or broker. Um, uh, he also suggested trustedchoice.com as, as one option. Um, and, and the reason that this is important is because home insurance is going to be dramatically impacted by climate change. Look what's happening here in California when it comes to fire insurance. Over the last two or three years with the major, the major fires that we've had, uh, fire insurance claims are just skyrocketing. Number two, expand your emergency fund. Experts generally recommend setting aside three to six months worth of living expenses in a savings account. Now, let's talk about that. A lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are suffering. Uh, after COVID. And I know that a lot of you, the great majority of you listening to me are living month to month. So it's not practical 
to just say, oh, well, I'll just put six months income in the bank. But guess what? You can make a decision that it's a goal and you can set aside 10, 20 bucks a week for long term, long term. And the purpose of that money is to put three to six months of income aside as a cushion against natural disasters and climate change. Number three, consider banking and investing to support the environmental causes. And number four, storm proof your property. A lot of people in California haven't had to worry about huge rain deluges. Well, now you do. So you need to relook at your property. Um, I want to go out tonight by reading you by reading you an article. All right. I, I want to read you this article under the category of hope. And here's and here's the article. Cynthia Page recalls a night 50 years ago when a man helped her get away from a group of strangers who surrounded her in a train station. In the 1970s, Cynthia Page was a young copywriter working in Manhattan and living in New Jersey. One night after missing the train home, she found a phone booth in the train station and called her husband. And when she hung up, she turned around and saw that she was surrounded by a group of tall, threatening looking men. She says, I don't know what these people would have done, Page recalled, but I was legitimately frightened. And just as, just as she was wondering what she would do, she heard an angry, booming male voice come through the train station directed at her. And the man was shouting about how they were going to miss their train. And she said it was like the Red Sea parted. This, this sea of great big men sort of parted and marching through them came this well-dressed, well-suited man. And he escorted her out of that dangerous situation and put her on her train, all right, and made sure she was safe. And then he disappeared. And now more than 50 years later, she wonders what would have happened if that stranger hadn't come to help her. She says, I think it does remind you what kind of kindness there is out there. It reminds you of the connection we all have together at some very deep rooted level. And it's a wonderful thing. You know, there's a lot of really terrible things going on in the world and we are subjected to them day in and day out on in newspapers, on news broadcasts, talking pundits at night, MSNBC, CNN, Fox. It's important to remember hope exists, hope is real and you have to have it. I'm Mark Gertz. You're listening to Reverse Your Thinking. Reverse your thinking about hope. Have a great weekend. Stay dry. We'll see you next week. Where the living is good.